Okay, welcome back. So, what uh, we will talk about today is polynomials in several variables. So, all along we have only talked about polynomials with a single variable x, but of course that is uh, you can generalize that let us do two variables. It is called the variables x and y. So, here is an example of a polynomial in two variables right. So, let us start with an example. Okay, so, I wrote down a long example. So, 1 plus x plus y plus 2 x squared minus 3 x y plus 3 y squared plus 7 y cubed. So, well what is this? It is so, how do you define a polynomial in two variables for instance? Well, it is got terms of the form some power of x multiplied by some power of y. So, those are terms which are referred to as monomials. So, what is a monomial? A monomial is just a term of the form x power i where i is some non negative integer times y power j where j is again non negative integer. So, i and j are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So, that is of course, what is called a monomial and a polynomial of degree uh, uh, in two variables x and y uh, is nothing but a linear combination of monomials, which means you take mono varying various monomials, you multiply them by some constants in front, you take finitely many monomials multiply them by constants in front and add them up right that is what we have been calling linear combinations throughout. So, uh, an important notion here for a monomial is that of degree. So, just like for polynomials in one variable the power of x the largest power of x which appears is uh, called the degree of the full polynomial. If I take just a single monomial x squared we say this monomial is of degree 2. Similarly, if you have two variables x and y you say the degree is a sum of the two powers. So, the degree of this monomial x power i y power j is just i plus j. Okay. So, if you sort of look at uh, these things here the, the monomials which appear in this expression I have uh, 2 degree 1 monomials which appear uh, this is of degree 2 x y is of degree 2 y square is of degree 2 y cubed is of degree 3. Okay. So, you have monomials of varying degrees. Now, here is a here is an interesting counting problem. So, I want to So, I want to do the following I want to count the number of monomials of degree d find okay, find the number of monomials of degree d. Of course, when I say this I should also tell you how many variables I have. Okay. So, observe this depends also on the number of variables. So, let us just take examples. So, here I only talked about polynomials of degree 2, but of course, it is easy to see what you do in general. If you had x, y, z, you would just say a monomial is something of the form x power i. So, here is what a monomial would look like if you had three variables.
So, let us do this for one variable suppose I only have so when I say n variables n is 1 so I only have a single variable x I am going to do the following I am going to write down the monomials of each degree. So, if I have degree 1 there is only x power 1 if I have degree 2 I can only do x power 2 if I have degree 3 I can only do x power 3 and so on. Similarly, if I have degree 0 I can only do x power 0. So, here it is very simple there is only one monomial of each degree okay, and so on. So, for every degree that is exactly one monomial. Now, let us do the same thing if n equals 2 okay. So, I have two, two variables x and y suppose I have n equals 2 I have two variables x and y let us do the same thing let us write down for each degree let us write down all the monomials. and let us count the number of monomials okay. So, again degree 0 is easy I can only have a monomial x power 0 y power 0 okay. that is the only way in which the sum of these numbers can be a 0. So, there is only one monomial of degree 0 degree 1 I can either have x power 1 or I can have y power 1. So, there are two possibilities if I want degree 2 so, I can either take x squared which means the total degree is coming only from the x or I can take x power 1 y power 1 or I can take y squared. So, there are 3 possible monomials each of which would have degree exactly 2 ok. So, this is now 3 Let's do the same thing degree 3 is x cubed x squared y x y squared y cube. So, there are 4 4 monomials of degree 4 and so on of degree 3. And so, on. so, again here it is pretty clear how this is going to go if I have degree d then here are the monomials x power d. So, I subtract 1 power of x increase 1 power of y so on keep doing this till I finally, land up with y power d and there are exactly d plus 1 such monomials ok. So, we have managed to figure the answer out in both these cases if you only have one variable there is exactly one monomial of each degree if I have two variables there are d plus 1 monomials of degree d ok. So, of course, the next thing to do is to look at three variables suppose I have x y and z let us do the same thing. Let me write out the monomials and then we will count the, the number of monomials. So, again degree 0 is easy there is only 1 x 0 y power 0 Okay. So, here we have uh, the following monomials there is 1 of degree 0 there are 3 fellows of degree 1 there are 6 of them of degree 2. Now, here we, we get to the interesting part how does this go on. So, of course, it is going to be very difficult to figure out the general degree d case unless we have some more systematic way of approaching this problem. So, let us do the following. So, suppose I want to write out all monomials of degree 3 involving the variables x, y and z here is what we will do. Let us only write down the monomials which involve x and y those which do not have z in them ok. Now, that problem we have already solved we know which are the monomials of degree 3 in only x and y. So, those are these 4 fellows x cubed x squared y uh, x y squared and y cubed ok. So, let us write those down. So, it is x cubed x squared y 
x y squared and y cube. So, those do not involve the z. Okay. Now, let us do the following. Suppose we also want uh, things which have uh, let us see. So, okay, great. So, now we also want to know which are the ones which have a z in them. right? So, these are the ones which do not have z. So, we, have, we already have a count of 4 there plus the ones which do involve a z. Now, let us look at the ones which involve a z. What are they going to look like? Well, they are all going to have at least a z power 1. right? So, they are going to each of the polynomials here which are, so I am going to write them down here, they are all going to have at least a z. Okay? So, let me pull out that power of z and then figure out what is left. Okay? So, if I write out a monomial of degree 3 which has z power 1 in it, what is left must again be a polynomial in x, y and z, a monomial in x, y, z, but of one lower degree because z power 1 already accounts for degree 1. What I am looking at is just the remaining degree. Okay? So, what I do is I take each of these preceding polynomials and I multiply them by z, that is all I need to do. So, I take each of them. So, I have x squared times z. Uh, so, I, I have written it like this z x squared, z y squared, z multiplying z squared, z multiplying x y, z multiplying y z and z multiplying x z. Okay. So, each of them has some z in it. So, that z you pull out and what is left is just a degree 2 monomial. So, something of one preceding degree and that number we know there were exactly 6 of those. So, we know the answer now it must be 4 plus 6. Okay. Now, this thing that we just did here this basic idea the procedure is very important. So, So, let us do the following. Let us give this number a name. Let us call the number of monomials of degree d in n variables. Let us call it a of d comma n. Okay. So, that is the number. So, what we have just proved here, if you sort of look at the, the argument here, it says the following. If I want to say how many monomials there are of degree d using all the n variables, here is what I can do. I pick one of those variables. I take the last variable and I look at the monomials which do not involve the last variable, not containing the last variable. Okay, so, these only involve the first n minus 1 variables. Now, the monomials of degree d which involve the first n which only involve n minus 1 variables is of course, the number is just whatever we are calling a of d comma n minus 1. Okay, so, that is those which do not contain the last variable plus the ones which do contain the last variable. Well, for that the idea was the following, you know that the last variable will surely appear to at least power 1, you pull out that last variable and you see what is left. So, just what we did here, you pull out the z and what is left is again something in n variables which has one smaller degree. Okay. So, plus number of monomials of degree uh, in n variables, but of one smaller degree. Take every one of them and hit it by z, where z is the, the name of the last variable. So, this fellow here actually counts, this counts the number of monomials uh, which involve the last variable, which contains the last variable. Right. So, by taking care of these two disjoint cases, what you obtain is the total count. This is all possible monomials of degree d. These are ones which do not contain the last variable and that counts the number which uh, contains the last variable. So, this is now exactly what you know we kept calling it a recurrence relation when we talked about the Chebyshev and the, the Legendre polynomials. This is now a recurrence relation again, 
but uh, it is a recurrence with two variables. So, it is uh, somewhat more complicated. So, observe. So, this is again a recurrence relation. meaning it determines the value of a d n in terms of somewhat lower uh, values either n is smaller or d is smaller. Now, when, uh, firstly we should say this recurrence is valid for what values of d and n d should be at least 1 and uh, n should be at least 1. right the total degree is uh, so I am assuming that so on the on the right hand side I have d minus 1 which means this is at least 0 and I also have n minus 1 occurring. So, it is at least a 0. So, now uh, we have a recurrence relation which is valid for both d and n at least 1 and whenever you have a recurrence relation you need some initial conditions as well meaning you need to know what happens when d is 0 or you need to know what happens when n is 0 further we know the following things the number of so let me look at what's a0 of n and let me also ask what is ad of 0 these would be our, our initial conditions so a0n would be let's read this it's the number of monomials of degree 0 in n variables right so we have already done this there's only one monomial of degree 0 which is x power 0 y power 0 z power 0 blah 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 every every variable power 0 so there's only one uh, fellow for all n at least 0. So, that is easy. Now, what about the next thing a of d comma 0 ok. So, d comma 0 is ah ok. So, that is probably not something that we would want to do because I mean we, we would have to define this. So, let me let me just modify this. So, let me say I want at least one variable I do not quite know what it means to have 0 variables. So, then this this equation is only true if n is at least 2 right because on the right hand side I have a n minus 1 occurring. So, which means this should be at least a 1. So, let me do this what is a d 1 this would be the number of monomials of degree d in a single variable right and that again we have done there is if you only have one variable x then for each degree d there is exactly one monomial which is x power d. So, this is also a 1 for all so, I should have said for all n at least 1 here and this is for all ok. So, these are the initial conditions. Now, this uh, this combinatorial problem here is best expressed in terms of a, a table. So, what we should really do is write a table with various values of d and n. So, let me just uh, do this d is on top n is on the bottom the degree can go from 0 So, the degree goes from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on the number of variables goes from it is at least 1 here. So, the degree goes from 0, 1, 2, 3 the, the number of variables ranges from 1, 2, 3, 4 right. Now, what we have said here is the following a 0 n means uh, if I put d is 0 and n to be anything the value is 1. So, what I am tabulating here are the values of a d n. So, this is the table of values of a d n. So, I am tabulating them what it says the first column contains all 1s
Okay, so uh, what this says is that the the first column. So if you plug in d equal to zero and take any value of n, it's all ones. And this condition here says that if you plug in uh, n equals one and then take any value of d, the values are again one. So certainly the first row and the first column have all ones in them. And now what the recurrence relation says is if n is at least two, which means you are at least from the second row downwards. And if d is at least one, so which means you are at least from this column here. So a d n for all these empty boxes is what the recurrence relation tells you. It says that if you want to compute the value of a d n in any box, if I want to know the value here, for instance, what I need to do is to look at the one lower value of d. So the value here is the sum of the value in the box above it and in the box to the left of it. So all it's saying is that it's just the sum of the values in those two boxes. Okay. So by sort of doing this iteratively, you can find the values in all the boxes. For instance, now I know if I want to find this box here, it's the sum of one and one, so that's a two. Uh, this box here would be the sum of one and two. Okay, so what I have done now to fill the table is more or less use the property that uh, the value in any box is the sum of the value in the box above it and in the box to the left of it. So here I have you know this row is 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, the next row is 1, 3, 6, 10 and so on. So these are the things that we already had uh, computed and now observe that if you wanted to know for 4 variables the number of uh, monomials of any given degree in 4 variables that is given by this formula here by this table 1, 4, 10, 20, 35, 56. In 5 variables it is given by this and so on. Okay. So at the moment this might look like some strange numbers that we are generating but uh, hopefully it is not all that unfamiliar. So in order to sort of get a better perspective on this one should sort of read this in the following way. So imagine there is a 1. 1 1 if I read it diagonally and so on. It is just a 1. So if you sort of read this table in this diagonal fashion then I hope these numbers are uh, somewhat more familiar in from other contexts. Okay. So we will again return to this when we talk a little bit more about counting principles and uh, we will see how the general principles will allow us to solve this counting monomials problem without using this recurrence just by a more uh, general procedure. And But in the meantime you can sort of try and you know think about what these coefficients really are.